Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to That Effing Guy. We are now on episode 3 of my movie news roundup um, show basically. So obviously as we know, I done that, I started this at the end of last year and then I done a soft reboot at the start of this year, the movie news roundup reboot and then movie news roundup episode 2 which was 3 months ago. Obviously like I said, I've, if you've watched my, my comeback episode, you know that I've been busy for the last 3 months working away in Edinburgh. Not time to do movie news, so now I'm doing all the catch up with all the movie news that's been announced. So, yeah, let's go ahead. So, movie news roundup episode three. Hi, effing guy, me, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. It's good to be back on YouTube, it's good to be back doing my videos. I missed it, um, and I've got all the time in the world now because it's locked down and I'm at a job. <laughs> so, let's start. So, I never actually got to do this. So on uh, May 4th, May the 4th be with us, uh, Taika Waititi, we all know who that guy is, that genius man who created the greatest Thor of all time, Thor Ragnarok, who also is obviously going to be doing Thor Love and Thunder, which could be fucking balls to the wall, just mental love, just oh, fantastic. So he directed an episode or two of The Mandalorian, the new Disney Plus show, Bounty Hunter, John Favreau, we spoke about it, done deal. Um, and obviously he's been rumoured for a, for a good maybe few months now that he's going to be helming uh, his own his very own Star Wars series or Star Wars film. It has now been confirmed on May 4th that Taika Waititi will be directing a Star Wars film, a fully fledged, full feature Star Wars film. Oh, it's like God's kissing everyone on the cock. It's brilliant, it's so, it's fantastic, it really is. The greatest news we could get on May 4th was this. This was the perfect news we need to get. So, we have no idea what he's directing. We know it's a film, we don't know when it's going to be, and um, we don't know if it's going to be separate from, obviously we know that the Game of Thrones guys uh, had a trilogy planned for December 2022, December 2024, and December 2026. Um, and they were supposed to be doing Knights of the Old Republic films. They dropped out because of the backlash of Game of Thrones finale. It wasn't, the, the, the series and the finale wasn't amazing. It wasn't great. It was still quite good. Some good episodes, some wee filler episodes that were a bit kind of, nah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so they dropped out because they went in favour of a, a Netflix deal. I can't remember what it was, but they, they went in favour of Netflix. I mean, they actually, like, stepped away from Disney and Star Wars to go for Netflix. Fair enough, Netflix is doing really well right now, but... We all know the, the true the true story, the true Hollywood story um, is the fact that they've just been given so much backlash after Game of Thrones they've just thought, fuck this. Because you know what's going to happen? The fans of Game of Thrones will just boycott the hell out of the Star Wars films and they'll just get trashed. And we can't have any more trashing of the Star Wars films. Like I said, I totally praise what Disney's done with the new generation of Star Wars films. I love them. There's been a lot of backlash and they've just came up and they've rise above it. But we don't want another soul on our hands of just basically failing so miserably that nothing else happens. So Taika Waititi, we have, like I said, we have no idea what he's doing Star Wars wise. It's a film and that's all we know. Now it could be episode 10, it could be a standalone film like uh, in the vein of Obi-Wan, Rogue One. No, that rhymes, didn't realise that. Um, yeah, we don't know. But I would like to think that he's going to direct a Knights of the Old Republic type film because that's the thing about Star Wars. We've never, and I've always wanted to, I've always said this, I always, I always wanted a, like a, like a, the first Jedi, like a Star Wars year one, like z episode zero. Oh, I mean, just, just the very first ever, like we've had obviously uh, Jedi Temple stories, the very first Jedi, etc. in the books, uh, comics, discussions in some of the films. Like we had obviously the Jedi Temple and the Jedi Bible mentioned in The Last Jedi, etc. No, sorry, The Rise of Skywalker. Um, I want, well, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, obviously Yoda mentioned it. Um, I want to see like a proper episode zero film, like right back to the very beginning, the dawn of the Jedi, like Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi, like a proper film. Um, and Taika Waititi, He's, he's a great director, he brings humour, dark, edgy, he's such a good director. Thor Ragnarok got a lot of hate, but also got a lot of love, like 90% love and 10% hate. I don't get people who hate it, <clears throat> you know who you are, 
it's a great film, it's different, it's something just, it's edgier than any other Marvel film, let alone any other Thor film. Um, but yeah, Taika Waititi, Star Wars, exciting chat to the titties, but don't know what he's doing, so we'll see, I'm sure we'll find out in the next few months. We probably would have found out come Comic Con in July, but as we all know, Comic Con ain't happening. I keep doing my hands, I keep, da, da, da. anyway, my hands are back, I mean, anyway. Uh, this other one comes is a, is a very interesting one. So Neve Campbell or Neve Campbell, Neve Neve, Neve Campbell, uh, Cindy, Sydney Prescott from the Scream films is in talks. She's confirmed. This is her percent. She has confirmed that she is in talks to return for Scream Five. Now, as a few months ago, it was announced that there was a Scream reboot or a Scream Five, just a new Scream in general. Um, obviously, the Scream franchise has went from big screen to small screen. Small screen, very good. For the, the first two seasons on the MTV series were so good, and it ended with a, a, with a dirty big cliffhanger, and then got cancelled. Ah, oh, and then got revived, which we thought brilliant, but it was a whole new cast, whole new theme, whole new Scream. Again, another year Um I've not seen it, but I've heard it's a Scream Resurrection, which, funny enough, I, I wrote a story, a wee short story, years ago, after when I, when I, when I, I was maybe, maybe 12, 13 years old, maybe, so I was about 15, 16 years ago, we'll say. Um, I was, like, into my horror film, loved horror films, I just discovered them for the first time, I discovered Scream for the first time, loved them, and I wrote a Scream short story, I called it Scream Resurrection. And funnily enough, it was about, uh, it was set after Scream 3, I think I mentioned it was like something like 10 years after Scream 3. So it's kind of like Scream 4, essentially, what that was, it was a kind of revival comeback kind of thing, and I called it Scream Resurrection. And obviously that short-lived uh, Scream Series 3 reboot, revival, what you want to call it, it was called Scream Resurrection. Funny enough, um, but I've heard it's a pile of shite, so I'm not going to watch it. I'll stick to the first two seasons, even though that finishes in a fucking hell of a cliffhanger that basically you just need to leave your imagination to think, right, shit went down. So, Scream 5 is happening by the guys who directed Ready or Not. Ready or Not, me and Kirsty watched that two, three weeks ago for the first time on Amazon Prime. That is one fucked up film. I'm not going to say a thing about it. I recommend you watch it. It is brilliant and just so strange. It's like you're watching it thinking, is this literally what, it's one of those kind of films, that there's, there's loads of films in the, in the last few years I've watched and thought, I hated it, I loved it. Like Get Out, Jordan Peele, I love Jordan Peele right, just before I stay us. Get Out was so good, but at the same time it was so shit. Like I could, I could say why I loved it, I could say why I hated it. Same with Us, I could say why I loved it, I could say why I hated it. Because Ready or Not finishes and you're just like, is that literally it? It's like, I loved it, but at the same time I can say, I hated it as well. So I can give it like a 10 out of 10, but also say 1 out of 10. It's weird how films sometimes get you, and you're actually on the fence, that you can say you loved it, but you can also say, I hated it as well. Anyway, so they're directing the new Scream, Scream 5, Scream reboot, we don't know what it is. Um, but we'll f I'm sure in the coming in the coming months, again, like she said, due to the, coronavi due to the coronavirus, there's been no like serious chat, it's only been a few things here and there in the last month or so that she's in talks, she's talking about it I mean she might come back as a, another character a wee cameo for the reboot or is it a, I mean like don't get me wrong a lot of uh, news reporters on like the movie sites that I follow are calling it Scream 5 um, and Nev Campbell, one quote I got from her was she actually called it Scream 5 but then another quote it said it was just called A New Scream. Um, she said that she'd love playing Sydney Prescott. Obviously you would because it was it, it, it was her rise to fame. Um, so why would you not come back? Don't get me wrong, it's one of those kind of things where like it's kind of like the American Pie franchise. So Scream 4 happened at a very good wee time to revive the Scream franchise. But you kind of think now if they'd done a Scream revival, would they do a Scream 5? Or would they do like a Halloween and do like a Scream Legacy film and have it like a direct sequel to maybe the first one or the second one and just minus out Scream 3 and 4? Um, like the Halloween franchise. And like the American Pie franchise because I think now being this year being, well last year being the 20th anniversary, this year being the 21st anniversary, I think last year would have been perfect timing for American Pie Reunion. Now obviously we got the American Pie Reunion like 8 or 9 years ago, 
And it was brilliant, but it was just at the wrong time because the fact that you had American Pie wedding maybe about five, six years before that. So I think now would have been time for the American Pie, the reunion, the 20th anniversary or 21st anniversary. But that's what it is. <clears throat> Speaking of revivals, this is like a revival show to do. Speaking of revivals, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I heard about this a few months ago, coming and going, maybe kind of TikToking about. TikTok, name drop. Um, I better get paid for these name drops, by the way. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is coming back again. Again. Yet another reboot. We had, like, I think we've had, like, I think this will be the, maybe the third reboot in the franchise, possibly. Well, well, I ain't near enough. Um, and you know what's funny though? All the, the newer Texas Chainsaw Massacre films from 2003 to like Leatherface two years ago, I've actually really enjoyed them. They've all been different, well apart, I tell a lie, the Texas Chainsaw 3D, the 2013 one I think it was? Texas Chainsaw 3D was Fucking a riot. Who the hell made that? And you know what's funny actually? Scott Eastwood's in it. Like Clint Eastwood's son is in it and he... Did he tell his dad he's going to be in it? Because I, th I think to myself, if I was Clint Eastwood's son and I told him, Dad, I'm going to be in this film, I'd be like, you fucking off your head. It was a pile of pish. And I remember watching it the first time, like years ago when it first came out on DVD and I was like, that's a pretty good film actually, it's not so bad. I think I've seen it in the cinema, I'm not sure. And I think because it was in 3D, you're like, this is pretty good, it's different. But when you watch it, just as the DVD or the Blu-ray on its own, oh, it's so bad, it's terrible. I mean, like, it's, it's got its wee kind of perks here and there, but it's just an overall disaster. Um, so this one is going to be, supposedly, it's uh, 100%, it's produced by the guy who directed Evil Dead 2013 reboot. Again, that's a great reboot slash legacy sequel. Um, it's going to be, uh, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his name, Fede Al Alfer Al Alvarez, anyway, Alvarez, anyway, um, he's directing it, Evil Dead 2013 directors uh, producing it, um, and it's going to be in the same vein as the original uh, Toe Pooper, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 1974 original, it's in the, it's in the same universe as that, it's supposed to be a, a direct sequel to that, um, I mean again, the... Texas Chainsaw 3D was a direct sequel as well, and that was a pretty cool wee kind of thing at the start, cool wee thing there and here and there, talking about the old family, etc. But it just fell apart. I'm hoping this one's not the same, I'm hoping it's a, a bigger budget, fresher, more cinematic looking, because it just, it, the, the other one just looked like a pile of shit, it just looks so cheap. Um, I think they wasted more money in the 3D than they did in actual, the, the concept. So this new film is set in the same universe as the 1974 original, it's a direct sequel, it's going to feature a much older, wiser uh, Leatherface, he's a, he's a kind of 60, he's a 60, he's been described as a 60 plus year old man called Kenny. Uh huh. Um, and it's supposed to be a kind of sort of legacy sequel, reboot, slash in the same vein as Halloween 2018. And here's my problem. Here's my problem. Empire Strikes Back happens right in 1980. Can't remember. I'm a Star Wars fan. I can't remember. 80, 80, 80 or 81. I think it was 1980. Um, and then everyone tries to do their Empire Strikes Back sequel. They try to do the Empire Strikes Back of their trilogy. Terminator 2, Empire Strikes Back of the trilogy. Um, or the Godfather. Everyone tries to do their Godfather Part 2. I feel as though ever since Halloween 2018 came out, Everyone is trying to jump onto the bandwagon. I mean, Heather Lancamp, Lancamp mentioned that she'd love to do a Nightmare on Elm Street legacy sequel and have her coming back as Nancy. It'd be good, but it's very kind of like, let's just copy their idea. It's like that meme of Mr. Bean in school in the, the, the exam and he's looking over and he's like, Shh, stealing ideas. That's literally Hollywood right now. They're trying to do that idea of, let's just take what Halloween done and made and made the money and made it beautiful and let's just try and copy it. Terminator, Dark Fate, great film. But was it a good film? Did it need to happen? Probably not. I've done a review of it on my Letterbox H Letterbox HD. I don't know. I'll put the link below. Below. I do movie. I've been doing movie reviews on that like a lot more recently when I was in uh, Edinburgh because it was just easier just to type it all up. I'd love to. I'm going to do a, a wee quick discussion of Terminator Dark Fate like proper like video, um, face to video. Try try to do that legacy sequel. 
and it was good, but at the end of it you're just like, I, I didn't really need it, but hey ho, but it's Halloween 2018, it just flowed so beautifully that you're like, I want more, fuck I want more, um, and I feel as though Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm going to try and uh, rehash that same idea of, it's a legacy sequel, yet yeah, the thing is so everyone from the original film is dead, the original Leatherface, dead, the original uh, girl, uh, Marilyn, whatever you call her, dead, everyone from that film is near enough dead I think, or just not in contact anymore because they're not in Hollywood anymore because it was a kind of one hit wonder with them, um, I mean I don't even think, is Tobe Hooper alive? He can maybe produce it, probably, I don't know, um, I would stop doing, I mean like, there you go, so they're going to, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued, I mean, Evil Dead 2013 was fantastic, it was a great revival to the franchise, it brought new depth to the franchise, um, cast Bruce Campbell as other face and I'll, I'll watch the film, <laughs> speaking of, I was going to say speaking of tomorrow, uh, Warner Brothers, my favourite production company, are trashing their Supergirl, their favourite, they had a planned Supergirl film and it's now being shelved, right? I never spoke about it because I wasn't that, f I wasn't really interested, I, li I like Superman, I love Sup I love Superman, I like Supergirl, she's pretty cool, the series, it's, it's quite good, it's actually alright, um, but a new Supergirl film, it's just, uh, what's the need for it, what's the need for having both the film, it's like the, the it's like, it's like uh, Ezra Miller as a Flash, like that, that Flash movie that's Maybe not happening because Ezra Miller, you know, choked a girl on camera. So that's maybe not happening. Do you really want to watch both? Do you really want to see two flashes in the, at the same time? I mean, I know they've done a wee crossover thing with the Infinite uh, Crisis or Crisis and in Infinite Earth, uh, whatever it was, and had the flashes join, they come across over. It was pretty cool for that two minutes. But do you really want to be watching the Flash TV show and then be like, right, I better put this in because the Flash movies out and have a different Flash? I, nah. I'm the same with that, same with this with Supergirl. Yeah, they're probably going to cast some cracking, like, you know, hot actress, Jennifer, Lop Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Lawrence, etc., et you know, whatever. But I remember back in the day when it was going to be Alicia Cuthbert. Do you remember, do you know, does anyone ever remember that girl? The Girl Next Door, remember that? That was a great film, fantastic film. Again, Timothy Oliphant, underrated actor. Um, she was rumoured to play Supergirl in 2003. Three or four or five, I don't know. I remember the concept art being made up and it was like, oh that's so good. Oof, oof. Um, but anyway, so Supergirl movie is now supposedly being shelved in favour of a Man of Steel 2 or a new Superman film um, with possible Henry Cavill being back as Superman. Now, here we go. That's been on the go for years. Right, we've had Michael B. Jordan coming out saying that he's supposedly pitched an idea of a black Superman to Warner Brothers. Now, I think no problem at all, at all, with there being a black Superman. Because there is a black Superman in the comic books. Um, I mentioned him ages ago, I can't remember what he's called again. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind that, but a proper, like, black Clark Kent? Why? Why? Was Will Smith even said why, he got offered the role of Superman in 2001 or two or whatever, he got offered the role of Superman and he said no, he said after the hatred of uh, Will Will West of him playing uh, whatever he was in Will Will West, fucking big tarantula I think that's shite, the only good thing was Kenneth Branagh, which uh, well, eh, the film is fun to watch I guess. Um, even he said, Black Clark Kent, no, never gonna happen. And I get that times have changed and everyone's like, oh, it's okay, it's the 20th century, it's fine. And it's like, it's 2020, but... It's that kind of, it's like that kind of, kind of twitch, you're just like, no. Um, but yeah, I, I'm all for Michael B. Jordan playing the Black Superman character that actually is in the comic books, but not Clark Kent. Uh, touch again, um, but yeah, Henry Cavill is supposedly coming back as Superman, maybe, Henry Cavill has campaigned for years that he will be Superman until he gets told no, um, there's no confirmation, there's zero communication from Warner Brothers as per usual, would you expect, they're just not Marvel, at least Marvel can come out after a while and just say, listen guys, this is the plan, A, B, C and D, 
I mean, they've even come out and actually t said that phase four is all over the place right now because of COVID-19. So we're going to reschedule and reformat the whole of phase four, right? Which is, it is what it is. And everything's been moved back, different days, different dates. Warner Brothers are just kind of like, yeah, we're making Suicide Squad. It'll come out when it comes out. Jim Gunn. <laughs> they don't actually have a, a, a plan, they don't have a structure, they just release films like left, right and centre. And don't get me wrong, their latest films have been fantastic. The Joker, brilliant film. But there's just no format, there's no structure. There's not been a structure at all. There was a structure way back when they'd done uh, Superman Return. Uh, no, uh, Superman Return supposedly was going to be a structure of a possible extended universe. Superman Returns failed, obviously. Green Lantern was like properly the start of the cinematic universe failed miserably. Man of Steel done a lot better but wasn't quite good with critics. I love Man of Steel, think it's the greatest Superman film of all time. Apart from Superman 2, I love Superman 2. Superman 2 is so good. Um, Man of Steel was brilliant and that's when it could have just started but it never, it failed miserably because Warner Brothers are just money grabbing bastards. They just make films and you just think fling them out, fling them out, fling them out, have no structure, don't care, who cares, whatever, whatever, whatever. Ben Affleck is Batman. Ben Affleck is Batman was a... Ben Affleck is Batman I keep saying Ben, ben Affleck is Batman, Batfleck and Henry Cavill as Superman are the two best castings they've ever done like in the current kind of universe, whatever you want to call it. Joaquin Phoenix as well, fair enough, yeah, as Joker and Henry and Heath Ledger. But I'm, I'm talking about the proper cinematic universe. They got those two perfect and it's like they're just ruining them and just... It's like they're trying to squeeze the guts at them so they just say, fuck it, I quit. Like Ben Affleck done. Shame. Um, and next is, this is a strange one, I don't know, right, so the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, as we know, is just, it's like a fucking ship, just it's like the Titanic, it's just, it's hit the iceberg, it hit the iceberg after the third film, it hit the iceberg even more after the fourth film, there are now skeletons in the fifth film, it just, it, that's uh, Salazar's Revenge, the one with uh, Benicio, no, Benicio Del Toro, uh, Javier Bardem, I liked it, it was alright, not bad, could have been better, could have been worse, better than the last two, um, but then they're like, we're going to do a sixth one, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, and everyone's like, yay, but then everyone's like, mm, do we need it? So now supposedly there's going to be a, a Pirates of the Caribbean reboot with Karen Gillan being eyed for the lead role. Now I love Karen Gillan. I've met her, I met her way back on her very first day of Doctor Who. Uh, oh, lovely girl. Um, so, so down to earth. It's weird to meet her because it was just it was so down to earth. Uh, Doctor Who, fantastic. She's brilliant in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Do I see a G even better in Jumanji? I think she's so good in Jumanji. Do I see her playing the lead pirate in Pirates of the Caribbean reboot? It's interesting. I don't know if she could maybe. I don't. I don't know if she's strong enough to lead it herself. I don't know. I think you need like a proper leading man. And you know for a fact it's going to be Dwayne the Rock Johnston. You know for a fucking fact he'll be somewhere in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Somewhere. Um. Anyway, last but not least, now I can just I can just hear Kirsty at my bedroom door. Because obviously it's 12 o'clock and we're supposed to be going to Tesco. Um, she's finished, she's on her lunchtime right now. So I'm going to do this last bit here. So, last but not least, probably the best news you'll get from this video Hayden Christensen once again is rumoured to be returning to the role of Anakin Skywalker in some sort of Star Wars project, whether it's a film or a, a series. Taika Waititi's film, maybe, but it's all, all bets are on and all money is on the delayed Obi Wan Kenobi series. There's been rumours for about a good year now that Hayden Christensen will have some sort of role in the planned Obi-Wan Kenobi series. It was uh, rumoured when it was an Obi-Wan Kenobi film. It's now rumoured heavily now that it's going to be a series. The series is obviously starting in the beginning of 2021. Um, it's been held back a lot just because script issues, etc. Thankfully, Ewan McGregor is staying on. He's standing by it. Um, he's been in the loop about this series when it was a film when it was just a discussion, so five years, six years, um, it's exciting as hell, will, I mean, will Ewan McGregor bump into Anakin, will Anakin Skywalker uh, be full on Darth Vader and bump into Obi-Wan Kenobi in the desert, I don't know, will it be a flashback sequence, I don't know, 
all I know is it's exciting because I love Anakin Skywalker. I think he's a great character. Not incredibly executed in the prequel films. I think he really, I think Hayden Christensen really got his time to shine with Revenge of the Sith. It showed two sides of him, light and dark, and it was brilliant. But the film just wasn't. It, it, the prequels are good. They're just they're not great. Attack of the Clones was very kiddie friendly, Fisher Price toy kind of thing. That was just made to make to make money with toys. Whereas Revenge of the Sith was more like in line of the original Star Wars films. It was dark but family friendly, and I think Hayden Christensen really got to shine there. And I feel bad for the guy because he obviously his his career hasn't been that great coming out of Star Wars. He's only known as Anakin Skywalker. He's done a few things here and there. He done Jumper with uh, Jamie Bell, which I like that film. That's quite a good film actually. That was going to start off a whole new franchise of those books and uh, films. It probably could have joined like the Marvel universe. I don't know. I, I, I mean, he's done a few things here and there, but he's not done anything that's been like, damn, that guy's a good actor. Like Robert Pattinson. Like I've not watched a lot of his films coming out of Twilight. But he came out of Twilight and he's risen from the ashes and done a hell of a lot of good indie films, I've been told. And now he's Batman. So I think Hayden Christensen could, it's never too late. I mean, it's only been 15 years since Star Wars. He could rise again. And I think maybe bringing him back into Star Wars will then revive him and bring him back into the limelight again. Um, it's happened to a lot of people. Ewan McGregor has, has, has had his uh, uh, acting career revived big time, I must say. I mean, Fargo. Doctor Sleep back in Star Wars, his career is reviving like hell. So I really think I really think Hayden Christensen could get revived at some point. Um, anyway, that's 26 minutes. It's now five past twelve. Kirsty's waiting. Lunchtime Tesco. Let's go. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, comment below what you think. Is um, I've got I'm going to do tomorrow. I'll be doing dogs barking like hell. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing my movie roundup. Episode, move around up um, episode 4 so keep your eyes peeled uh, sorry it's been long the first video 27 minutes now um, I'll put even like chapters in the description okay bye bye guys